All right, how's it going everybody? So today we're gonna to take a look at pivoting from the perspective of the EJPT examination from INE. So they do a really good job of explaining what pivoting is, but they do leave out a bit of nuance that makes it hard to tie it all together. And so that's what this video is going to be is a guide or an explanation on how to approach this. Now, I don't work with INE and I don't have the rights to the actual lab documentation. So I'm not gonna show the actual lab or commands, but we're gonna run through it together and kind of explain as I go. And then then as we get to the more complicated parts, I will break down what to do and, and how to go about them. Okay, so as the lab loads here, we can begin. Okay, so the lab is seemingly loaded. First thing you wanna do in this case is let's find a machine to compromise that we can use as our pivot. So I'm gonna open up terminal here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna ping the target to ensure that it's up and it's active. So I'm just gonna say ping dash C, uh, have it ping to us four times and it's demo1.ine.local. Now in this case, they provide this machine to us, but in the real exam, you'll have to find it using like ARP or, or scanning the local subnet somehow. So in this case, uh, it's provided, but again, you would, you would need to find this using like nmap-sn for host discovery, that kind of thing. So let's ping this. And we can see, okay, yeah, cool. It's it's up, it's active, and uh, that's to be expected. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just run an nmap, and we're going to check out some of the services that are running on it. So let's nmap sc. That's going to test some default scripts. And then we'll do sv for the service detection. And we're going to, again, plug in that, that domain, that target. And let's have a look and see if there are any services running. And if so, what are they? All right, so the results are in. And among other things, we have an HTTP file survey here. And there's an exploit associated with this. The author of this is Regetto HFS. And we're going to exploit that. So let's first of all, just clear this up, give us some space. And let's open MSF console. We'll do it quietly. And we will search for that exploit. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in search and I'm going to type in Regetto as I know that that's the author of that HFS server. And it looks like we have the exploit here. So let's go ahead and select use zero. And let's show options here to see what we need to configure if anything. Looks like most of it is configured for us, but we will need to set the R host. Now the R host again was that demo one. So let's go ahead and set that. Dot local. So it says that that's set and everything else should be good to go. We should be okay with this default payload as well. So we'll just type exploit. You can also type run if you'd like. And let's see if we get an um, interpreter session here. All right, so we have a interpreter session here. Now, one thing we can do is we can say get UID just to see where we're at. And it looks like we have admin rights. One thing we could try to do is migrate to system, which is the highest. So we could do that by typing PS, seeing a list of processes that are running. So for instance, I see this one here, LSAS might be a good one to try to uh, navigate to or even uh, SVC host. So let's say 540. So I'm gonna just type migrate 540 and we'll see if that works. Cool, looks like it works. So if we type get UID now, we are system, which is the highest. Doesn't necessarily matter, but it's good practice. Okay, so at this point we're on the pivot machine. Let's take a look at the network interfaces that are connected to see if we have access to any other subnet. So to do that while in Meterpreter, just type in IP config and it's going to list out the interfaces so if we look at interface 21 this looks interesting it looks like there's a, a subnet here we might be able to access and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to shamelessly copy this right here right click copy selection and what i advise that you do is you just paste that into chat gpt and you ask it what subnet do I need to target for auto route? Okay, I know it's very elementary and there are ways to do this manually uh, through calculations, but this is just the easiest and quickest way. 
So it will tell you, and then we'll go ahead and look at the next command to run after we have that subnet. All right, so ChatGPT will return the appropriate subnet. And from here, what you wanna do is you wanna type run auto route dash s to specify the subnet and then put it in accordingly slash 20 like so and that command is going to tell metasploit to route traffic to the 10.3.16020 subnet through the current meterpreter session which will allow you to reach the internal targets in that network so let's enter that or let's hit enter and you'll see that a route has been added which is great so from here, and this is where it kind of gets confusing, they use the port scan method via TCP. I like to use the ARP scanner method, so I'll show you how to do that. So let's background this meterpreter session, and let's use a post exploit. Use post multi slash gather slash ARP underscore scanner. And it looked like it couldn't find it, so I'm just going to search it instead of trying to do it from memory. ARP scanner. And there it is, so we'll use zero. And then if we show options, we can see that it requires two things, our hosts and session. So we have an active session, which we can use, which is session one. And the our host can just be that subnet that we identified earlier. So set our hosts to 10.3.16.0 slash 20 and then the session can be set session and that's just going to be session one I believe we can always double check by just typing sessions yeah okay sessions one okay so from there what we can do is click run or type run and hit enter and that's going to start returning some IP addresses on that internal network. And that's going to provide us insight as to what we can go after next. Okay, so as you can see, it is now returning the results of active hosts within that internal network, which is great. Unfortunately, this lab only has 30 minutes left and I can't wait too much longer, but I can tell you that the host that we're looking for, it's actually provided in the lab. It's this one here, it's demo2ine, which has this address here. So as you can see, we're kind of building up to it over here, but again, we kind of have to skip ahead because we're, we're losing time. So eventually, this IP address, this one would show up here. And what you can do is with these IP addresses is you can take them and you can run that TCP scanner module and you can set the R host to that IP and you can test ports to see which services are running and which ports are open. And that's how you get an idea of what the target is that you can pivot to. Now, it does take a bit of time, but remember, this is a 48-hour exam. You have a ton of time to do all of this. In this lab, unfortunately, we're a bit limited, so I kind of have to hurry it up a bit, and I, I do apologize for that. But this is how you find the second IP address, and that's basically what I just wanted to highlight. So let's continue. Okay, so we've added our route, and we found the second IP or the target that we're going to use the pivot machine to get to. Now what we need to do is we need to port forward. And the reason we need to port forward is because we need to send traffic from our Kali machine to the second machine through the pivot. Because tools like browsers or Nmap can't use meterpreter, can't use the meterpreter route directly that we have set up here through auto route. So we need to add a port forward and that looks something like this. So we're going to type port fwd add dash l over port 4422 let's say or 4433 rather and then we'll specify the remote port uh, which i believe is 80 in this case and then we will do the target ip which is dash r and that was that 10.3.25.213 and we hit enter and it says that that relay has been created like so. 
Okay, so before we get going, I just want to say that I initially opened 4433, I believe, which was the port on the Kali machine, but unfortunately that didn't work for me when I tried to end map it. So that might be the same for you. If that's the case, run the same port forward command and open a different port, but keep the same uh, port number, the remote, the remote port number, and keep the same remote uh, IP because we're still targeting the same service at the same target host. We're just opening up a different port on our Kali machine to see if that works, okay? Once you've done that, then you can go to a new tab. So what we should be able to do now is end map the, our local host on the forwarded port. So Kali thinks that it's scanning itself, but the traffic is being forwarded via interpreter to that internal targets port uh, that we specified earlier. Uh, in this case, it is, I believe, 4422. So let's give that a go. The command's going to look something like this. Uh, it's going to be nmap. And then we're going to target the service. Stealth scan, specify the port. Remember, that's that local port, which is 4422 in our case. And then we're just going to say local host. We'll hit enter. And we'll give this a moment to run. And this is scanning that internal target that we could not reach before uh, through that port forwarding. All right, that took a little bit of time, but we can now see that our internal target is an HTTP service, particularly running Bad Blue, which there is an exploit for this in uh, Metasploit. So that's going to be our next step is to target this particular server, or rather this particular service, and uh, and gain access that way. So let's go ahead and go back to our interpreter here and we can just background this. Oops, background. And then we can search for bad blue. And in this case, we're gonna be using the pass through. So we'll just say use one. And then we can say show options. And in this case, it looks like it just needs an R host. And of course we have that. So let's go ahead and set the R host to, we'll set the R host to this guy right here, our target IP. And another thing we'll need to do is change the default payload. So we can see that this is a reverse TCP, uh, but we're not having the connection reach back to our attacker machine. We're going right in because it's being port forwarded. So what instead we'll do is we'll set the payload to windows forward slash interpreter. If I could spell interpreter forward slash bind underscore TCP. So that's a bind shell. And now we can exploit, and this should give us access to that target server that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to access. So we'll give this a moment here. And it's looking good. Awesome, look at that. So now we have a interpreter session on that internal target that we pivoted to from the compromise sheet compromise machine earlier. So that's how to tackle this pivoting stuff. It's probably the most complicated element of the EJPT. I shouldn't say that because, because you know, everyone's different with, with what they find complex. And there are a lot of other uh, domains and, and, and things that you'll be expected to do on that exam. But this is definitely one that people struggle with based on what I've read on Reddit. So I wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit more insight as to how you can go and approach this particular concept because yes it is not the most straightforward and unfortunately unfortunately there's gaps in teaching from uh, from I &E, so hopefully this clears it up but yeah so now you are on the interpreter machine so they'll probably ask you to do something like switch to a shell and then go to the root of the uh, file system here and then I don't know we're on windows so Listener, and there's the flag there. So we would just say something like type flag dot text, and there you go. You would retrieve the flag, and and that would that would be the end of that. So hopefully this video helped you. If it did, leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. I apologize for it being all over the place. This was a hard one to film. Um, the lab was not cooperating and kept timing out, but hopefully, hopefully it provided some insight and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. This has been Exploit and Chill and we'll catch you guys soon.